You ready to roll? All right, now I'm not. <laughs> roll on just one second. All right, good morning. This is the Committee of the Whole, Board of County Commissioners, March 10th, 2022, at 9.05 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Was the meeting properly advertised? Mr. Chairman, this meeting was advertised in the Escambia Sun Press on March 3rd, 2022, in the Board's weekly meeting schedule. Uh, Madam Attorney, do we need a, a motion to pass this as? Uh, no, I do need you to just officially adjourn it, and we're good to go. We already did that. We already did that. Okay. All right. All right, uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this morning we have uh, one item on our agenda. It's the jail discussion. So at this point, without further ado, I will turn it over to and recognize our County Administrator, Wes Marino. You're recognized. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Commissioners. Good to see you all this morning. So we're looking forward to this discussion, some ability to get some direction. I think uh, it's been spoken of pretty frequently recently. Uh, I know I've had conversations with the board and I've uh, also, I know the media has picked it up. So we have some conditions in our old jail that are unacceptable and we know that and we realize that and in realizing that we've put a strategy together to try to vacate the old jail just as much as we can uh, part of that a short term strategy and then a long term strategy and so as i've said in the, in the past recent weeks part of the strategy is to harden our fairfield drive a annex we have a timeline on that of probably seven to eight months at a cost of about a million dollars, probably, give or take. Could be a little more, could be a little less. We have a RFP going into purchasing. If it's not there already, it will be there uh, before the end of the week to go out and get the consultant to get the design for that hardening underway. And then uh, we've issued a, a notice to the State Department of Corrections that we intend to take the L Street work release building back in roughly probably five and a half months now, five months, uh, that timeline will be up. We will harden that facility and util utilize that facility as well to house inmates. Uh, additionally, this week, we are currently moving inmates out of the old jail into the new jail. Our strategy is that by close of business Friday, we will have as close to 200 inmates moved out of the old jail into the new jail as we possibly can. So that is the immediate strategy and of course, the bigger discussion is uh, how we move forward long term. Uh, before I guess before I move into that discussion, are there any questions that the board would have about our short term strategy? Commissioner Underhill, you recognize. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Administrator. What is the impact on the workforce uh, for your short term strategy? Does it require more or less than what you've got going now? We will be able to uh, implement this strategy with the current number of officers that we have. Uh, with the intention of being able to recruit more officers. I guess I should mention this, that today uh, the correctional officers and the union are voting on whether to accept the memorandum of understanding that we put across the table to them on the 25th, which would significantly increase pay and we feel like will allow us to recruit more officers. But the strategy that we're speaking to right now, we can implement the strategy with the number of officers that we currently have. Commissioner so, Bender, oh, I'm sorry, you done, Doug? So done, I'm to understand that we're going to have three different facilities, right? The L Street, the Fairfield, and the uh, and Castle Grayskull. That's correct. And yeah. there'll be uh, incarcerated folks in all three of those. That's correct. And we're going to do that with the same number of personnel that we've got just at Castle Grayskull. It, right it, it is an orchestration. It is absolutely an orchestration. It's going to be but an interesting one. Yes, it absolutely no. will be. It will be. It will be uh, some creative orchestration, but we will implement this strategy and we will be successful at it. All right. Thank you. Mr. Bender, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, Wes, I know you've been working on this for a while uh, since we've talked about it. 
Um, but I know on the L Street, we've sent a letter saying that we intend to take back the building. Um, but I know that the sheriff's also talked to me a number of times about, about that building. So uh, where do we stand with, with the sheriff on that? Uh, I feel like the sheriff would probably still want to utilize that building. Uh, I have not personally spoken with him. However, I think in my assessment, what is the greater need at, at the most immediate at, at the moment? And so I'm kind of moving in that direction right now. Sure, a hardened facility versus office space. There's, there's Correct. a big difference. Okay. Correct. So it seems like <clears throat> we're, we, with this plan, uh, that, that we're probably giving you support to go ahead and, and retain that building, which I know you've already sent the letter off to, but um, but letting the sheriff know that, that we intend to use it for our own immediate needs. Absolutely. I will be happy to contact and contact him. All right, Wes, no more lights. Please continue. Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay, go ahead, Lumen. Wes, because this is an immediate need, and I think that I'm on record for saying before the state brought those inmates back in that we should have taken acquisition of that building. Um, being that our congressional member is engaged and this has become a public outcry, I would ask that we work with the Department of Correction with the state to see if they would expedite in being a partner rather than us being a landlord, uh, us being partners in providing for the safety of our inmates. And if they can expedite that, if they have other alternatives, uh, to utilize that we ask them to, to do that so we can quickly uh, take control of that facility uh, so we can get those inmates out of that existing building. Sure, absolutely. All right. Good. All right. So that's a short-term strategy. We have a long, we have a long-term uh, proposal, I guess, or, or, or a discussion, if you will, and that is the construction of a new wing or phase uh, uh, to the current facility. Uh, we have a timeline. We feel like uh, that it could, from beginning to close of construction, could be as much as six years, maybe five years. Yeah. That is a conservative es estimate. Commissioner Berry. Uh, Wes, if you don't mind real quick. Sure, absolutely. Before we move on to the, especially about the financing portion, which is uh, certainly of interest. but. Um, Part of the short term is, is just kind of an understanding that we have everybody feasibly out of downtown that can go to the road camp, right? That's because correct. We, we a, year, have. a year ago, that was an issue, and it was an issue that, that all of a sudden, once the issue was, you know, once we talked about the issue at the board meeting, all of a sudden we found, you know, a couple dozen more folks that we could get back, that we could get out there. We do. We hover around 200. Sometimes it drops a little, little less than that, but we're hovering around 200, and that does max out the facility at the road camp. And I mean, that, and we're keeping that. We're that, that is our steady, okay. steady number. Now so they're all not all. They're not all on work crews. They're not yeah. not all eligible to be on work crews, but they are eligible to be housed at that location. But if we have, okay, in that hypothetical, if we have folks that are downtown that are eligible to be on work crews as well, we would swap them out. And send them to the road camp, right? And send those that are not eligible on work crews back downtown. You know, I will, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> right. Commissioner, and, so, and somebody's somebody's managing that. I mean, yes, the, yes, yes, Commissioner. It, what, because, seriously, it, seriously, it is being managed. All right. It wasn't that long ago that it wasn't being managed very well. I understand. Okay, but all so all of these short-term and long-term fixes are on the assumption that we're also maximizing the resources there. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Bender. Then Commissioner May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, how how many state inmates do we have that were waiting to be transferred out to state? About 37, no, sir. 37. Okay, so that's a lot better than the 115 we had about a month ago. Yes, it is. So good job on that, but I think we still need to, to keep pushing them out, doing what you're doing. Thanks. Commissioner May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What is our officer to inmate ratio at the road camp, Wes? Chief, I'll let you answer that one. Is it about? Go ahead. Security staff that uh, maintains it is, is is five staff members plus some supervisors, uh, and we have 200 inmates there uh, throughout the day and throughout the night, uh, ish, if you will, 200 ish, uh, not including the 40 RCOs that take crews out every day. How, wait, how many RCOs? 40. Yes, sir. So that equates to how many officers per inmate, Chief? Uh, uh, four. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. 
It would be quite 40 difficult. Inmates to to every, so let, oh. I just, I want to be clear. 40 inmates to every. So I just want to be clear. 40 officers to every inmate. One, one officer. One 40, officer to 40 inmates. 40 inmates, yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, so what is it in the existing old jail and in the new jail? So if it's 40 to 1 at the road camp, what is it in our jail? Nearly double that because of different security elements that are in play. So in the new jail, it's 80 to 1. And in uh, the old jail, some of the housing units are 80, some of them are 64. So in the old jail and the new jail, they're, they're the same. And I'm just trying to picture in my mind. No, in the old jail, we have upwards to 96 plus inmates in there uh, in a housing unit. So what, what's the maximum amount of inmate to officer ratio we would have? What's the maximum? I'd have to run those numbers for you, sir, because it's all different based on every, every housing area. It's a little bit different. So I guess more direct, it, do we ever exceed 100 inmates per officer? Per uh, single officer? No, sir. We don't. Okay. All right. So we, it's 40 at the road camp, and we'd say 80 at the jail. It's Depending what on their custody grade and physical location where they're housed at. Yes, sir. All right. And so with that, the DOJ report that was given, how does that equate to standard operating procedures and guidelines? Well, the DOJ. Are we, are we in line with inmate to officer ratio with in that the DOJ there was not a specific number alluded to they said that we needed to increase by almost 100 staff uh, since September of 18 we've increased 78 oh. okay and, and, and that's fine chief but, but there's no specific number is what, what no, I'm hearing it's, it's at your discretion is well, what, it's at what the discretion of the physical plan of the the building that we're in location that we're in as well as the custody grade of the inmate that we're, we're managing Right. So, I mean, I just, and, and, and Jeff, I know you kind of took the lead. I mean, just for the morale of our, our employees who are probably watching, um, what's ideal? Again, sir, it's based off the custody grade of the inmate. I mean, you can go up to some, some organizations go up to 100. Uh, ideally, uh, 72, 80 number is, is what you want not to exceed in a minimum medium custody setting. Uh, maximum security, obviously, you're going to increase staffing and draw down your numbers. Right. So what we do know, uh, the permanent variable is we know what the existing facility is. Yes, sir. We, we know what the inmate population, the charges. So right now, are we in line or are we out of line? No, we're, we're pretty close where we need to be. There's always exceptions, obviously, because day-to-day operations swing and change. Uh, and I'm not trying to be deceptive i'm just simply saying we don't control what comes through the front door and until the next shift comes on we balance the numbers we move population around routinely to operate within the confines that we have okay thank you mr chairman all right uh, chief while you're there um <clears throat> one of the things that we heard just now is that in the old configuration at the old jail you can you can have 96 but it was it seemed to me when i when i toured there that you have the the cells uh, that were designed for one, they've, they're tripled up. They're tripled up, yes, and, and I understand that makes it a lot more efficient uh, for the for the for the officers. They got one in their control room, and then one that kind of roams the floor. But um, that that wasn't the way it was designed. Um, and I think maybe perhaps understanding the need, you know, when we when we had what happened to us in 2014. But um, to me, now help me understand why I'm wrong on this. If we've tripled the capacity at the old jail, that's that's really not in great shape. Um, why couldn't we take our new jail and retrofit it and double up some of that and put these inmates in a better, cleaner, more modern facility that, that I, I mean, I, if we're, I mean, unless we're going to, because I, I don't really, I'm not interested in spending another nickel in the old jail. I've said that in the press. I'm saying it publicly here. I don't think we need to spend another dime on that thing. I'd like to introduce it to the wrecking ball based upon what I saw. But in speaking with uh, Administrator Marino yesterday evening at length about it, um, but if we are going to keep some of those pods, are you going to keep them tripled up or are we going to put them back down to one inmate per, uh, per cell uh, like it was designed? Well, there's a couple questions in there. Let me try to get back. To the there's person. a lot. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, we've already increased or we're in the process of increasing uh, the bed capacity in the new facility by introducing another set of bunks and multiple. Fantastic. Multiple of the eight, eight man cells are going to 10. Uh, they're mini pods, if you will. Why not 16? Quick question. They're, because all you're going to do is tear that place up that much faster. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I mean, that's the reality. Okay. I mean, that's why we're in the condition that we're in. Uh, the physical plant of the old facility, while the infrastructure is f starting to fail and failing, the integrity of the means that it was built is secure regarding that housing setting. Mm -hmm. um, I can, it has been 
raised to the capacity that it is at right now. Obviously, it's not the design capacity, but it's been operating that way. We're going to maximize all the bed space without jeopardizing additional security in a new facility or deteriorating that facility at a much rapid pace. Five years of over stat or over overpopulation will, in my humble opinion, will mm -hmm. destroy it at a rate we don't want it to go to. Well, yeah, we certainly don't. But another question that I have, and, and help me understand this, because when I toured the new jail when it was under construction, and then when I toured it shortly after it opened, and then just recently. Um, one of the things that strikes me is the old configuration seems like it's much safer for the officers because you've got a control room where you're locked in yes. and if something happens you can call for help the new uh layout and i asked the question of of the gentleman who who toured with me and they had a, a very long um answer and they said well you know because they're out there in the open on a podium mm -hmm. and there's no it doesn't appear that there's any place where they can get. And, and so they said, well, you, you have to use psychology. You have to use, you know, relationships that you form with people. I, it seemed to me that, that that was something that was a lot less safe than the, than the old jail. Help me understand why the new jail is safe and that that wasn't a design flaw. I don't believe it was a design flaw because, as you remember, it was meant to replace the central booking that okay. obviously exploded. It wasn't meant to replace the multi-towered and tiered hardened facility with higher security threats. We basically have two, two units within the new building that can sustain maximum use mm -hmm. as it's designed. The rest of them are meant for minimum and medium custody okay. inmates. So therein lies why we still need the old facility to maintain the majority of our 300, I think yesterday was 317 maximum custody inmates. Let me ask you something. Is there something this board could do to retrofit some of those pods that I walked through and, and make them more secure so that they could, I mean, you know, for lack of a better word, can we put a shark tank in there and, uh, you know, I'm being, you know, just somewhat no, facetious. There's some things we can do if we're going to house higher risk inmates in there. Yes, sir. That could, that is that something that you need? That's a, that's just a basic question. Do you need us to approve the money to do that so that your officers are safe? Anything that we can do to improve officer safety, but however, it is built as designed mm -hmm. for a particular customer. But you're hearing today's discussion okay. from several of us, we don't want to put more money in that old jail. So in order, in order to make the new jail accommodate what we have, what would, what would you need to do? What would we need to, to We'd do? We'd have to retrofit every door on every cell door because they're not designed to- That's not going to happen. What would we do to, to make the officers safe in those pods where they're out in the open? They're going to have to come out in the open to manage the inmate population. I understand that, but they got to have a safe place to go back to. That's why I think they like the old jail uh, because of that control center. They can. Um, Commissioner, I believe we can we can retrofit that area where, where the officer stands. It, it, it might be a chain link fence type solution. Just something they it can may get not on the be, radio no matter what. It may what's not be pretty, right. but absolutely, I do believe we can make some of those modifications, and I do believe we have the budget to do it. Okay, Commissioner May, and then Commissioner Bender. Commissioner, Commissioner Gotch, I'm I'm going to respond to you because ultimately I I feel some of the weight. Uh, of the new jail on my shoulder because I was on this board. We were led to believe, you know, after change orders of millions of dollars, that the central stations would reduce personnel and make Absolutely. it more efficient. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a, an expert in, 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 in jails, but that's what we were told. And I think, Chief, you were told the same thing by construction people. I, I know you were on board at, at the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And so as we look at the modifications, I want to make sure that before we spend money, that it's actual. You know, I mean, that, that we have the experts that are coming back to this board telling us because ultimately we get the responsibility of it. Absolutely. And so, I mean, as we segregate, Chief, uh, our inmates are, I mean, high security, medium security, low security. And, and is that how we're basing our ratio? And I mean, are we basing that? Because it, I, I think in my conversation with CO, someone would say, you know, like we we're having to manage 100 people. True, false, I mean, or none of the above. Uh, I would take your word for what we're doing. But on a high security, maximum security, low security, are we uh, being able to adjust those numbers to make sure that we're getting efficiency? So are we taking our low, I mean, to me, a, a, a low security person, quite frankly, should be out there making sure that the lawn is man, maintained at the, at the county building, but a high security person should have um, however many inmates, I mean, how many officers we need to protect them. So, I mean, are we able to delegate that? Absolutely, we control the, it, it's, 
the technical term of it is a, an objective jail classification system. The system, we, we put the data into it and it tells us the custody grade of the inmate based off of um, certain standards that are built within it. Uh, and, and that way we, we try not to manipulate it because then it becomes uh, subjective versus objective. We, we, we take these found principles based off custody grade, gender, medical issues, mental health issues. All those are, I mean, there's a litany of things that come into classification of an inmate. Uh, we have many inmates that can't live with other inmates, so they're taking up the bed space of two versus one, uh, or one versus two, excuse me. Uh, and that's compounded throughout all the classification systems. So in a prison, what would be the ratio of an officer to an inmate? In a prison setting? Mm -hmm. it, it's completely different than a jail setting because uh, they're well established, they've been through the system, they understand where they're at. Uh, we're dealing with people that are sometimes at the lowest point of their life and, and, and trying to manage that right. uh, versus somebody who's been in incarceration uh, or incarcerated before. Um, so so the, the classification system is our, our, our fuel, if you will, uh, of how we manage the inmate population. Right, I understand. I mean, it just, you know, the, I'm not a corrections guy, but I do coach a little kindergarten to second grade basketball team. And I have 11 players, I think. It just seems odd to me that one officer could maintain 96 inmates under their control. I mean, that just seems extremely high to me. But I mean, I, I don't know the practices. But and I mean, again, it just seems like a lot. I mean, I'm trying to coach 10 kids on a basketball team. Uh, so having you know 96 kids, I mean, and, and I say all that to say, Chief, that I want to be very supportive because I'm not one that believes that it's just the pay. I believe morale, working yes. conditions, all those things, quality of life is helps you to recruit, yes, not only recruit, to retain. I don't, I mean, probably the majority of my colleagues would disagree. I don't think it's just a money problem. I don't care how much we go to the union. I mean, but if someone, if the standard procedure is that inmates at Okaloosa or Walton are only having 15 to 20 inmates per person and we're having 96, well, I would want to go over there and work where my workload is not as stressful. So, and that was the only reason for that concern. So, yes, if you're telling me that standard operations procedures is, you know, in the 90s, West, I, I guess that's what it is. I have no reason to argue that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Bender, and then Commissioner Berry. Thank you. Uh, Rich, you said that there was uh, 317 uh, max custody. Max custody. That was as of yesterday. Did, to the, the low and medium, do, do they fill up the new jail? I'm sorry? Do the low and medium fill up the new jail? Pretty much so, yes, sir. Pretty much. So, yeah. so it probably wouldn't be wise to try to harden the facility when we're already using it at maximum capacity when we have a facility that, and I understand not wanting to spend additional money on the old jail, but it seems that we would, we would decrease the efficiency of the new jail by trying to, to, to harden it when, when it's already full with, with people that it was made for. Yeah, when it's all said and done, the, the, the minimum custody and medium custody inmates will be put in back in those units. Uh, no matter what we end up, we, we need to get, we will have to get back at the end of this process, get back to the intended purpose of that building, and, and that's programming of inmates, uh, giving them things to keep them from coming back into jail. But as we fill it with things it's not designed for, it changes, <clears throat> excuse me, our, our outputs. Sure. And, and I know, I mean, listen, I, I've heard there's the, the 10 to $12 million number that's been floated out, honestly, for a few years now that, that, that we knew we would have to spend on the old jail just to keep it open. Um, you know, and that was one reason why, you know, even before coming on this board, I was looking at going to phase two, trying to, because we thought we could, A, save some money uh, and having the contractor already mobilized, uh, B, not having to spend the 10 to $12 million on the old facility, uh, and, and but then by the time things got worked out, it we the cost savings wasn't there to, yes. to keep them mobilized, right? I, I think we had talked about that when I, when I first came in, um, and so you know now construction costs have gone up, and and what was looking at a, a seventy or eighty million dollar facility is is over three figure pushing probably close to what we paid for this one. So um, you know, and it's uh, it's not uh, ideal to to spend this much taxpayer dollars on on inmates and, and housing them, but it is a function of, of this board that, that, that we need to do that, and um, we do need a plan for the plan for the future. So uh, I am glad that we've put together a short-term plan, but I think at some point we are gonna have to put some money. Uh, I, I mean, I think that's a, a reason why we've come up with this other plan is that, you know, Jeff, we didn't, we didn't wanna sink 
50 or 60 million into the old facility knowing that that it was only going to be good for 10 or 15 years and we would still have to do a new facility so you know i i think there's there's a point where you probably have to put a little bit of money in the old facility but as long as we manage that and and don't sink 50 or 60 into it um then i think it's a, a much better better plan and, and Robert, before I recognize Commissioner Barry and then Commissioner Underhill, uh, to your point, I don't disagree with much of what you said, but what I would say, the, the difference being is if our medium and low custody inmates are filling our current jail, I understand that, but that was happening before the wild card of using um, the work release center on Fairfield to pull 400 out of there. You pull 400 out of 650 or seven or eight, then you've got space in there to double up bunks, make the retrofits necessary to make it a, compatible with maximum security. I think that can be done, and I think that's what um, undermines your argument, because if, we, if we're going to spend, we're going to have to spend money on Fairfield. We're going to have to spend money on L Street, more than likely as well. You harden those so that, that, so that they accommodate the medium and low security people, along with our road camp, then that frees up the additional space in our brand new $144 million jail, where we can retrofit the pods as necessary to hold those maximum security people. and introduce the old jail to the wrecking ball. I meant what I said, Robert. I'm not interested in spending a nickel in there, but if you guys want to, I'll be outvoted. I, I want to see that thing demoed, and I want to forget that it ever existed. And I think if you put together 400, look, let's do some easy math. 400 at Fairfield, 150 at L Street, 200 at the road camp, 850 if you go strictly by what the capacity says of the new jail, but we can probably shoehorn a couple hundred more, right? We did it at the old jail, and we can probably do it in a more safe fashion, more responsible fashion. I think if you pretend, if you start from a, a premise and you pretend that old jail's gone, we'll find a way to make it work. But if we just kind of meander forward and start dumping money, um, I just think, I don't think that's the wise course of action. But again, I can be outvoted on that. I saw what I saw when I went in there. It was designed for one person. Then they added a second bunk. Then they added what they call boats on the floor. And then the toilets are overflowing. And then you've got human beings sleeping on the floor next to overflowing toilets. I don't want to put another nickel into that. That's inhumane. It's unacceptable. It's third world. I'd rather fix the new jail. If we told you today, that old jail is gone, you'd come up with a plan to make it work. I know you would. What would that plan look like? It'd be very expensive, and uh, it'd be tasking on manpower. And when I say very expensive, the immediate mm -hmm. thing would be ordering um, trailers that are built like cells, uh, putting up sprung structures that are built like cells. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's alternatives to do it, mm -hmm. but they're not cheap. Well, nothing's cheap in this business, as we're all learning. Um, Jeff, let me just say, because I know you, you're looking where the vote is. <laughs> the last option that I'm going to do is put money into that existing jail knowing that I'm going to tear it down. There are innovative alternative ways uh, for incarceration of holding inmates. We looked at those before we built the new jail. Yep, absolutely. Do, do, we, do we put outside pods and security, as he just said, with trailers and bunkers? I mean, do you do that? Do you send them to Walton County? Do you send them to Santa Rosa County? I mean, for me to make an informed decision, I would have to have that analysis. I mean, what does it cost to, to renovate? What does it cost? I hate doing it. I hate buying new cars for Walton County. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will look at every option that's the most economically efficient way to get it. I'm glad that you went over to the jail. I've been yelling at the top of my lungs for eight years about the condition of that building. That building should have been torn down a long time ago. And so I'm with you. That building has to go. we got to find the most effective alternative uh, to house our inmates. And one of them is the reduction of incarceration. So we're going to have to work with our judiciary, area, particularly on those with mental health issues and homelessness uh, that are being housed in our jail with medical conditions. Uh, we have to reduce the population because we can build 19 more jails mm -hmm. and you will fill them. All you got to do Absolutely. is build them. You will fill them uh, until we put some money into prevention and rehabilitation uh, will be tasked with building buildings forever. So I think it's multi-pronged. So yeah, absolutely. I, I, I get where you're going, but I think that this is going to be a broader conversation. And you're right. I'm going to hand it off to the administrator and the chief. I mean, to talk, how, how can we reduce jail population? I don't care whether it's day reporting, whether it's monitoring mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, low-risk inmates. Uh, and well, how do we look at, as you said, moving quickly with the two facilities that we have without trying to put money into the existing jail? Yeah, thank so you. I, I just wanted to respond. I mean, I, I've, most of my votes on the jail, 4-1, I, I was 4-1 to not take it. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. And I, th I, there, I mean, it would be crazy to think we can't, we won't need to spend any money on caretaker functions, fixing things, uh, while we've come up with a real plan to, to uh, evacuate that jail, evacuate. 
I don't use that word. Um, but any money I spend on that, that I'm going to vote for, any big money is going to be to introduce it to the wrecking ball and bring it to the ground. Um, Commissioner Bender, then Barry, yeah. then Underhill. Thanks. I was just going to say, I mean, I'd want to see my option before I say I'm not going to sink any more money into it. You know, if, if as you say, bringing in trailers, you know, what's the lifespan of those? Are we going to only use them until the new jail comes up? And if it's a, an X factor of how much it would take to put into the new, to the old jail versus yes, those? I mean, I'd want to see those numbers before I say I'm, I'm not putting anything into it. I want to see the numbers before I do anything. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying if it's, I'm just, I mean, if it's three times as much to bring in the trailers versus just putting in that smaller amount into the old jail, I'm going to vote to put money in the old jail because it, 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 it's cheaper and, and we've already got it. So. Uh, and, and Rob, until we have numbers and have done the analysis, all we have is a great concept in theory. Exactly. And so, That's what I, I mean, I I'm not going to build my house based on a concept and a theory. It's gonna, what it's going to actually cost. Commissioner Barry, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Commissioner May, the, the reduction of incarceration is something that, that, that we've talked about you know, a number of times for a number of years, and um, the numbers are um, a little bit less. Um, they are. But, You've done a great job. At well, I mean, it, well, uh, <laughs> they're a little bit less for, what, for whatever reason. But, um, um, you know, we just, you know, we don't have a lot, you know, we don't have a lot of control over that. And uh, I do think there's a lot of truth in what you said that, that if, uh, um, if we sunk a, bun a bunch of money into the old jail and then still built a new jail and added 800 beds, somehow they'd they'd get filled. Um, uh, I think there's I think there's uh, yeah, I think there's a there's a there's some nature there's some nature in that, and there's some statistics statistics throughout the state that bear that out. When you look at um, you know percents of occupancy um, uh, throughout you know whether it's the county detention facilities or the state department of corrections facilities. Um, they they run a very consistent uh, very consistent occupancy rate for whatever reason, um, but I think through uh, you know through managing you know as, as good a relationships as we can with our judicial friends and with the chief judge and, and those folks as well as managing the relationships as well as we can with the state's attorney's office, I think we have been somewhat successful in managing those relationships and I think uh, and I think those have borne fruit to some degree um, so that's a so those are those are good things um, you know what, no it's, it's it's not all bad and and you know a couple hundred folks less is uh, you know is a good thing that's that's you know 200 more people that are uh, that are hopeful hopefully gainful members in society that are uh, you know that are taking the Taking that additional opportunity that they've been given to to, uh, to kind of um, you know kind of get things squared away, which is you know very difficult to do when you're incarcerated. So, and, and Stephen, I agree with it, and I certainly should thank you for your leadership, and I mean, and, and getting engaged in the reduction. I mean, and so many times our our jail becomes a holding tank for the mental. Uh, ill patients that we have who need mental health counseling for our, 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 our citizens who are genuinely seeking drug rehabilitation and we don't have uh, adult drug rehabilitation. Uh, people who have health, whether it's kidney disease, HIV, all those things, uh, we become the hospital. And so that was the premise for my conversation. And I mean, we got the opioid money. And I know that we're working with CDAC, but I mean, we, we have to have drug rehabilitation. We have to have mental health counseling. I mean, what do we have? Two mental health counselors, one mental health counselor? Uh, uh, we have nine FDs, so we're filling them through. How many do you have currently right now? Um, I'll have to be <clears> for you. I, well, I, mean, I, I wonder how short. many did you have on, on, on staff now? That would be a good question I'd like to know. So, But a number of those are, are relatively new positions that we've, that, you know, that we've pushed for and, and, Absolutely. Pushed for and everything over the last few years. Um, <clears throat> you know, and, and I think some of the opioid money, I don't know. Exactly what uh, you know what can be done in the alternative court system with uh, you know specifically with the drug court over there, but it would seem like that would be a, a very legal landing spot for uh, uh, for some of that opioid money, Allison. I mean that is it would seem you know not even a gray area. That would seem to be a pretty clear area where we could put resources if that would help. We need to make sure that our partners, because we sure. we have been identifying our partners, and that we want to make sure that they're building that into their well, plan. I think I think we need to make sure. I think whoever is interacting. Please, with those I mean, folks, I've, I've, I've yelled that. I, I I hope that is a part of the plan. I mean, that's our why our incarceration and the homelessness and the poverty is up. It's it's drugs and, and mental health, and if we have resources, well, they should be applied toward helping those citizens. And, you know, one of the things that, that you know, you've heard and, and I know that I've heard from folks is, you know, there's, um, 
you know, even with even with good relationships, even with you know uh, very healthy, positive relationships across the street, um, you know, there's there's you know there's I think it's like the bell you know the bell curve narrative. There's you know clearly things that that they can help with. There's clearly things that they can't do anything about, and there's only there's only a certain number that are you know kind of in the middle that are uh, maybe that gray area where um, where they do have some discretion. Um, um, and uh, you know one of those when you look at and this is in part of our part of our presentation today, Wes. I, I saw you've got some part of the PowerPoint notes some of the offenses that people are in jail for, um, and you can clear. I mean clearly some of those are felonies. I mean I, I don't, I'm not a uh, corrections or a, a law person, but um, it looks like based on Department of Corrections statistics, we've got about 925, 930 of our current daily population as of the end of January at least, which mirrored December and, uh, and November as well, but as a percentage mirrored those months, um, as pretrial felony? Yes, sir. It, run, it runs north of 85 routinely. I'm 85%. sorry? It, it, it fluctuates every month, but as far as pretrial confinement, uh, I'd have to get to the exact well, numbers. Well, pretrial felony. <coughs> pretrial felony appears to be, or based on at least the numbers we're reporting to State Department of Corrections, about 930 of our folks are pretrial felony, which, yes, would, which would seem to be, back to this conversation, I mean, that, that's where I don't, I don't think we, you know, there's probably less discretion even from friendly yes, folks sir. about the incarceration on that side. Oh, absolutely. So if that's our pretrial felony, what what is the felony number that we would put with that to say, okay, this is our, you know, our, our population. If we've got 930 that are pretrial felony, what's the, if we've got just say 1,600 total, that's 570 folks that are some type of, that are serving some type of sentence, is that Half and half misdemeanor felony, three quarter felony. What's that makeup? I saw in the 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 PowerPoint doesn't really outline that. No, I can get that. I can have that broke out for sir. Because um, it, it would seem to be whatever that population is, that's non felony or misdemeanor population. That would seem to be the the I guess the the target for opportunity. That 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 population would seem to be the target for the opportunity for for whatever we can do. Um, Creatively to try to to try to help it, yes, sir. You know, based on, you know, no no conversations have given me, um, you know, any feedback based on either pretrial felony or felony sentences that are there's there those folks are going to be there. So there's very little we're going to be able yeah, to do about that. Then the, also the fact that it overlays that is some of them are recorded as as pretrial felony, but they also have misdemeanors, uh, misdemeanor charges too that are serving, which kind of go hand in hand. I mean that's. Um, there's usually not one felony without a misdemeanor charge. It's well, as a, as a layperson, as strictly as a layperson, if somebody has a, I, I, if they have a felony and a misdemeanor, I would see them as a felony yes, pretrial sir. person. I, I would, I would yes, presume sir. you would assess the worst of whatever the charges are or yeah, whatever do. their sentence is. Okay. Um, all right. On your personnel side, how many folks are you close to to being able to onboard? Are, is it 25 or 30? We What's have 25 the in the academy right now. There's another dozen and a half ish right now that we're bringing through the hiring practice, if you will, or process, uh, with the intention of hopefully having another academy late May. Uh, starting another academy in late May with the uh, proposed increase in salary. I'm hoping that we are able to draw some people that are already certified that, that brings them on board a lot faster uh, from other agencies, mainly the state, if you will, uh, because we will bypass their salary, uh, matter of fact, up into their supervisory ranks by our starting salary for a correctional officer. So how much longer do the <clears throat> do the 25 have in? in they just uh, started, sir. Sorry. Oh, they just started. Yes, Is it 10 week program? All that plus the FTO program after the academy, uh, we, we will bring them into our Manning fold, if you will, midsummer. Okay, and you don't have anybody that recently completed that? We don't have a class recently done? Not really? I'd, I'd have to find out when we live. The last graduation, I believe, was in. If you don't have a bunch of new people over there, then I'd presume you don't. I mean, I'm sorry? <laughs> if you don't have a bunch of new people over there, I'd well, presume we do. you I haven't finished a class. I just don't remember when the, last gra the okay. academy graduated, sir. Okay. Um, um, and now you're the starting folks. So there's a $2,000 sign on bonus. Is that yes, right? Uh, and they're going to be starting at 43, 44. That was our, pro that's just the short proposal. Of 44, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Just short of, 44. just short of 44. Okay. And, uh, you said that the PBA votes today. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, 
Well, I, you know, I know you've got a, you have a lot of vacancies, and you know, one of the things that I've talked to Wes a lot about, and, and perhaps you about as well, you know, hypothetically, you've got this large number, but in reality, you know, we've burned through a million dollars of overtime just through the end of February this year. Um, that's a lot, and you know, we we had issues last year, but last year was still we're still three times what we were last year, so. We're, we're not trending, you know, on the overtime side at least, we're not trending the right direction. I'm, I'm sure y'all both know these figures, but um, so hopefully we can get those folks on pretty soon. And, you know, reality, you're not going to fill all those open spots, but I would assume if you can, over a three or four or five month period, insert 35, 40, 45, 50 people into your workforce. Yes, sir that that's going to draw down that overtime utilization tremendously, I would hope, right? Absolutely. Okay. And thereby, going back to what my good friend said earlier about morale, I think that the, the uh, you know, the no days off, the mandatory work, the, you know, the, the uh, protocols that you have to put in place to be able to staff the facility because of personnel, mm -hmm. hopefully will be alleviated some with the introduction of, uh, you know, 35, 40, you know, hopefully more than that by the end of the summer. Um, you know, can you run two academies simultaneously? Georgetown's rather limited because of the majority of the trainers are employees, not of ours and other agencies. Okay. So they've got to cycle those folks through. Uh, us getting two academies back to back uh, was a big ask uh, because they, they have other things. They've got a, other training elements that they do. Um, we can approach them to it. Well, if uh, it takes advocacy with the organization that runs George Stone, I think that, you know, ask for, ask for help there. Some of us have good relationships, uh, you know, across the street there. And, uh, uh, and, I, and I think that they would be very accommodating as we've been very accommodating for the majority of their needs over the years. Right. So, and you have those content and Steve, well, thank you. And, and I would only, you serve with the superintendent, my friend. So I mean, that's <laughs> well, the best contact you have right now. Well, he, he makes, you know, a good board member, but Steve, just to respond to you, um, and I didn't know the number was a million dollars in overtime, but I can just tell you, forty-four thousand dollars plus a two thousand dollar bonus, plus a retirement, plus life insurance, uh, is a pretty good um, salary. The people that I represent go to college, you know, for four years and can't make forty-four thousand dollars a year. Yeah, kind of our teachers. I mean, they're they're barely getting over. And we have teachers right now that don't make, you know, forty six, forty eight thousand dollars a year and work five days a week. So yeah, tenure teachers. Tenure no, teachers. Yeah, I mean, right. I, so, I believe. Yeah. So no one's gonna make me believe that it's just pay in it's Gamia County because I mean I tell you what that's well above the medium income of those that I represent and I would argue that those that you represent <coughs> in, in the North End. So I, I see where you're going. I know the city had a problem with hiring minority firemen. They, they opened up their own academy. I mean, if we can be innovative, I mean, if it took a, if we spent a million dollars in overtime, but if we took a million dollars to open up our own academy, I mean, you'd find my support. I mean, I don't know the standards and the guidelines, but I mean, I think we should be doing innovative things. And so um, I would be very supportive in, in hearing your ideas yes, uh, on, on that. And, to you know, at least find to, to get your assessment in response to my colleague, who I think we've been on the board the longest, dealing with the jail. Uh, what is the retention issue? I mean, what's in, I mean, and money. I, it's the environment. I mean, you, you gentlemen, most of you have been inside the jail. Uh, it's an environment. People come in, they they work for a week, and they realize it's not for them. Uh, I use example my own brother. He was in work. I walked him through the facility, and he's like, "There's no way I can work here." And it just everybody that isn't fit to work in an environment of corrections. Right. What are we doing to boost morale? What, I mean, what, what type of incentive programs do we have to recognize employees, boost morale, give them um, the encouragement to want to? Because, I mean, I'm, the recruitment, I, I'm, my opinion, Steve, you know, Joy Stone has never been very successful in recruiting and training people in my district. You know, I mean, it's somewhat, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, you can't tell me that, you know, we can't find people within your district, my district, and even Jeff and Doug and that, uh, that would want. It's how you, it's how Nick Saban recruits, which makes him successful. And, well, you know, it, and it, it is environment. And, and 
I'd be supportive. So one of the, you know, one of the things going back eight or nine years, you know, when we came on the board, there wasn't, uh, you know, there wasn't an employee of the month program, and, uh, um, you know, and that kind of parlayed to having an employee of the year, and, um, you know, it's it's probably not something that that, uh, you know, that we give a lot of thought to uh, the impact that that has, the impact that that has, but over the years, it seems to have an impact, okay. and, you know, maybe something, you know. Maybe something that could be done in a short term, in a short term manner, uh, you know, uh, for some period of time. Maybe, you, you know, the corrections can have their own employee of the month or, or some type of some yeah. type of some type of recognition that's just an in-house thing to try to recognize those folks that are uh, those folks that are really, uh, you know, that are really doing a good job as public servants that are also caretaking, you know, caretaking the the people that we have uh, that we're tasked. With custody and, and uh, the responsibility for Commissioner, it. Commissioner Barry, I want to weigh in on what you just said. I like that idea. I think that's <laughs> something that has legs. But I think more importantly, if we can tie inexpensive, it in yeah, inexpensive, inexpensive. But if we could tie that in with um, with attendance, maybe a monthly perfect attendance, because I know every day three to five people are calling in sick. They can't get days off, so they're just they're not going to be punished. So they're just not telling you when they have the, the kid has a ball game. They're just calling in sick, which leaves the other officers short. So I like where you're going with that. I'd even like a, to even something weekly, even recognition for. Even if it's something smaller on a weekly basis and larger on a monthly basis, but you until we about get more people, until we get more people over there, you talked about the overtime, but that's what's killing it. You've got yeah. some guys in there; they're working, they're working like crazy. There's one guy in there that's already made twenty-three thousand dollars in the first two months because he's working a bunch of overtime because he's willing to do it. But hey, before we go further, I'm going to recognize Doug. He's been waiting twenty minutes with his light on. Doug, you're recognized. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It was a good conversation. I'm glad you guys had that opportunity. Um, I have noticed that the lights are flickering. You did pay the FPL bill, right? Because they're not cutting anybody in slack this winter, so um, yeah, I'm assuming sure, we paid them. Yeah, make sure make sure you do. Um, so, uh, if you were sitting up here in 2015, and the three of us were, this is all deja vu, right? Um, in terms of what all of our options are, the exact same set of problems of having to uh, temporarily hold people um, uh, else, elsewhere. We went through all those discussions about trailers and all those different things, and settled on a course of action. Then um, we're going to have kind of the same uh, problem set in front of us now. Um, uh, one of the things that was wrong with 2015 is, uh, and I think is wrong about today, is we're having this discussion again and we do not have our constitutionally elected sheriff as part of the discussion. thought that was a problem last time, it's a problem this time, because um, it does affect him uh, and he does bring a, um, well, he represents the people on law enforcement and, um, and he brings knowledge information that would, I think would be valuable. So Wes, I think that uh, if we have any more of these types of discussions, we should probably uh, extend the invite sure uh, out of etiquette and uh, if he chooses not to be here that would be fine but it's my understanding that that invite did not go out so that's correct a uh, little bit of an oversight no problem um i am very concerned about the idea of using orchestration <laughs> as a model for uh, how you're going to man three sites uh, where you're already undermanned at one um you know i too uh, manage uh, personnel uh, in my civilian job and uh, in times of stress and uh, as in the cyber world, that's pretty much all the time. Um, we say we use, use, you know, through orchestration, we're uh, creatively using our human capital. Uh, but the reality is that we're burning our human capital like candle wax um, the, the longer we do that. So we have to be very careful uh, about that. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that as an option. I think it also, Wes, you've had, I know that uh, uh, the chairman has been fairly vocal about, uh, uh, you know, about the option, the tear down and build option. Uh, I know that that has been, uh, you know, that was very much a discussion of uh, the 2015 discussion. Um, you know, why not go ahead and build both wings simultaneously and get it rid of Castle Gray Skull instead of quit, keep throwing money in it? It literally is for the three of us. It's this is some serious deja vu conversation. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that we don't have that option in front of us. Okay, so Stefan, talk to me about. I mean, inflation's going through the roof like I haven't seen since Carter administration when I didn't really even understand what it meant, except that it meant that my dad couldn't build that, buy the house that he wanted when he retired from the Navy. So where are we at in terms of bonding? Because obviously if we have to build, we're gonna bond, right? So is this a time that makes sense for bonding? Commissioner, no, that's probably not a question you're prepared to hit this morning. So well, actually, actually, we are. <laughs> okay, hit me. Uh, the 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 bond current bond rates are still near the historic lows, so um, we're we're probably around anywhere from 3.4 to 3.6 percent as far as interest rates, uh, which is still pretty good, you know, historically. Um, as we know, the the market changes daily, so obviously the longer that we take to make certain decisions, uh, the picture gets gets a little darker as we move forward. 
Okay. Every single thing that we've waited on or a can that we've kicked down the road during the seven years I've been sitting up here ended up costing more. And that reality has accelerated like I've never seen before in the last year. Um, Lake Charlene, we've got to figure out some more money. You've got staff racing to try to find some more money to be able to get the Lake Charlene project done. Found out yesterday the traffic circle, uh, traffic uh, calming in at Johnson Beach uh, is going to require another hit out of my discretionary, um, which I will do to make sure that we you know, make good on the promises that we've made. Um, there's literally never going to be, there is no good time to build a jail. There is no better time to build that a second wing of the jail than right now. Uh, so I agree, you know, keep the camera running on this. I completely agree with uh, Commissioner Bergash that it is time to tear down Castle Gray Skull and build a second wing of the, uh, of the jail. If we don't, then we are going to have, whereas this is deja vu from 2015, seven years from now, it'll be deja vu from today. So, um, you know, I, and, and certainly for, I don't mean to, certainly did not mean to be derogatory towards you, Commissioner Bender, for not being a part of that 2015 discussion. You should do all of the research that you're talking about. I totally support whatever time is necessary for you to come, you know, to, to, to get that information. So I wasn't, uh, that certainly wasn't meant to be demeaning in any way. But, um, yeah, we've, we've been through this before. We know what we're dealing with. Castle Grayskull must come down, if not now, then seven to ten years from now. Um, and, uh, and throwing more money in it, as Commissioner uh, 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 Bergash and Commissioner May have now said, uh, are bad. You're at three. You're at three with that as a preferred, as a possible preferred COA uh, course of action. So that should be properly staffed and, and drawn out. Let's see what those numbers look like. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. so that's all the only comments I have. All right. No, I'll just respond. Commissioner Bender, go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks. I was going to, I was just respond to that and that, like I said, I mean, for four or five years, I've been saying we needed to build phase two. So I'm, I'm not disagreeing that we need to go with phase two. I'm just saying how, how we, how we band-aid it until we get to that completion date. Well, I think we have, uh, you know, we're going to be bringing on a consultant that has a security engineer as part of the team. I think we, we can take advantage of that scope and expand that scope to look inside of the new facility to see what opportunities we have to do some additional harding and, and make some additional space there. Uh, our average, you know, our average daily peak in 2016, it was almost 1850, 1900. Right now we're trending in our wintertime low at about 1550 or 1600. So we know that typically as summertime, spring and summer get here, our population tends to creep up. So we are looking at, you know, we're working off the 1600 number at the moment, but we also need to be prepared for that, for that expansion of that growth. Uh, of the inmate population. You know, we, we historically, we look back, we spend about 0.5% of the county's population, between 0.5 and 0.6, is what is uh, populated in the jail. So as our county population increases, if we still keep, and we historically, we have trended at 0.5 or 0.6% of the county population, so we'll need to, you know, as we move forward, account for, for that statistic as well. When it comes to morale, I know I've had some conversations with Commissioner May. I know that's been a, a, a huge thing that weighs heavy on him. And uh, Commissioner, I, I like some of the initiatives that, that were talked about a few minutes ago. What I had, what I'm kicking around, honestly, is doing what I did at Public Works. Uh, when you got to Public Works, you know, when you're at a certain level, Sometimes it's hard to get down into the troops and really hear what's going on, really hear how they feel about their conditions or, or equipment or, or whatever the case may be. So what I, what I did out there, I started having uh, monthly or bi-monthly lunches, roundtable lunches, where I asked the supervisor, I said, you, you pick me 10 or 20 people. I don't care which 10 or 20 they are. You know, we'll either you know, do a barbecue chicken lunch is re relatively cheap, or we can go buy pizza and give me an hour, or hour and a half to sit with these employees and just listen to what they have to say and listen to what their concerns are. And the, the, the things that you can move on and make change and, and impact uh, by gaining that feedback was a good, a good thing for me at Public Works. I think it would be a good thing for us at the jail, uh, especially with so many uh, negative connotations that, that we've heard as of recent. Thank you, Wes. And Mr. Chairman, one, one I'll, resp I'll, I'll respond to that, Wes. And, you know, it's 
obviously money is is, is a great incentive uh, to encourage someone to, to come to work. I mean, their pension and retirement is also a reason, you know, if they can keep it, uh, to be able to retain them. And so all our, our package, it's all how you package it. I mean, it, literally a correction officer is coming to us with a sixty to seventy thousand dollar package. You know, I mean, that's pretty good here in Escambia County. Uh, but we have to make sure that the morale is built. The working conditions are, 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 are good. But I keep in mind that you are working in uh, in a jail. I mean, it, it's somewhat just like, I mean, if you're cutting grass, you're cutting the grass in the heat. And as Commissioner Underhill said, if you're working in cyber, you're stressed. Or the five of us probably, you know, take years off of our life because of the stress. So there's always work-related conditions. And you have to decide whether or not those conditions uh, fit your lifestyle. Uh, but for me, Wes, holistically, as we look at whether we build a new jail, don't build a new jail, how do we realign the way that we do corrections? If we're doing corrections, you know, I, and I agree with Commissioner Under, law enforcement should be here. I mean, there are people that project crime data, uh, arrest rates. I mean, they correlate third grade suspensions uh, to prison beds. I mean, that's all, it's so much data out there that would give us the prediction of how many beds do we really need. I mean, just because we've had a trend of 5% increase every year, is that going to hold true or is it going to increase to 10% or 15%? You know, I see Ronnie Mack here, but if I'm doing the jail the same way Ronnie Mack did the jail, then, you know, Something's wrong because life has changed. And so I think that we've provided corrections uh, in the same deliverables that we have done year after year after year. And so with all of this, not only should we be creating a building with us, but we should be creating an overall model of how we're going to handle crime, jails, incarceration in us. And as Underhill said when he left out, we talked about you were not at the hand. We talked about day reporting centers. Can we get those people out of day reporting centers? Are we in constant contact? Do we have our correction? I'm talking with our judges that when you know, I hear every day we got people who are on dialysis who have stage five cancer. They can't even get out the bed. They can't walk. I mean, you know, should we be having those people put, you know, in a mental institution sent to the state? Should they be in a hospital? I mean, is it the most effective model to continue to just house them in the jail? And to me, that's the holistic approach that I would want to see as we address jail population, because there's no way to build enough jails to house as many. Population low, arrest more, you know? But when you can't arrest more and you are forced to have other alternatives, you will create those alternatives. And the only alternative, it's a sick society, if the only alternative is to incarcerate people. And, and that's my point. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Commissioner Barry, then Commissioner um, Bender. Thank you. Um, so as we, I mean, as you're looking for some conversational direction, I mean, I, I uh, uh, you know, do uh, certainly do talk to Wes quite a bit and have a lot of trust in Stefan. And, you know, as we, as we look at what we have to do going forward to accomplish the end, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to support them and what they, uh, you know, and what they think that we need to do. And, uh, you know, the long-term solution, I think everybody agrees on the long-term solution and, um, you know, there probably will be some short-term band-aids over there. The problem that we're in is not a, is not a problem of uh, recent making, um, and it's most likely not going to be a problem of uh, immediate solutions. So, you know, it's, uh, it probably does involve some resources uh, mending, the, uh, mending the old jail to some facility for some relatively short period of time to try to bridge the gap to, to get to where we need to be. Um, and as far as going, you know, going forward, I was able to talk to Stefan some yesterday about the financing options. And as we, you know, as we start to put those together, like I said, I have a lot of trust in both of them and, you know, we'll support their, uh, you know, we'll support their ideas about how to, uh, you know, about how to solve this uh, tremendous problem. Um, on the, you know, as, as we look at the total top line capacity, I don't, I don't know that uh, I'm going to be hard pressed to support any any more any any more capacity or trying to build in for growth. I, I, I don't I don't think that that's the way that things are trending necessarily. Um, you know, if you look at the State Department of Corrections over the last five years, they've reduced they've reduced Department of Corrections uh, custody by twenty percent. So they're closing state prisons right now. So that I think gives us some trend line of some sort. Uh, you know, so not to say that not to say that we could accomplish that because again, the state has ultimate control of the 
of uh, all levels of, of their decision making, which we don't we don't have that. But uh, I do think it's reasonable to to maybe just try to manage the people that we have today and and uh, uh, and not build in a lot of cushion. I don't I don't, I don't know that I want to build in for you know for any percent of growth going forward. Even though our population would grow, I think uh, <clears throat> and. You know, obviously, we're having this discussion today, and it's something that's you know very important to our community. But I think this is a discussion that's probably happening not just throughout the state of Florida. I know, correct, you know, corrections is the largest, uh, you know, it's the largest budget item in the state budget. Um, so it's not just something that's happening here. It's not just something that's happening in the state of Florida. I think it's something that's happening throughout all the municipalities, counties, and states in the country, um, trying to address what they're going to do with incarceration and corrections. And um, I think as time goes on, that. You know, hopefully through whatever measures that we don't have a lot of control over, we'll figure out how to incarcerate fewer individuals. However, however, as a society, we can do that. Hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we're able to accomplish that. So, you know, if we just manage for what we have to deal with today, I, I think that's a I think that's a reasonable approach, um, you know, rather than uh, rather than building for for growth in somewhere. I'd, I'd rather not see any growth. But. Commissioner, Steve, ben, Commissioner Bender. Can I respond to him, yeah, please? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Stephen, if, if Lumen May had his magical way, we wouldn't build a larger jail. I mean, and, and we wouldn't even build phase two. Uh, but morally, I can't have the knowledge that some that there are people sleeping on a floor in a, in a jail. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's unfortunately the, the current condition of where we are from what I hear, and Chief, you can correct me. I mean, if, if our pods are meant for two and we got three and someone's sleeping on the floor, then that's fundamentally a problem. And that's what I'm to understand. And I don't know if that's true, false, or check the other but, box. But if we, the structure itself was not in such disrepair, it wouldn't, I don't think we would be in that in that state. I mean, I don't right. think it's the size of the structure as much as it's the. Well, it, it's a combination of all the, all the above. I and mean, that's a good question, Steve. I want to know that answer then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's not the size, because I tell you what, I, 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 no. I'll tell you, I sit with the defense attorneys like Gene Mitchell, and they will say that they're, they're, their clients tell them that they're sleeping on the floor. So, I mean, I'm with you. Is it size or is it just structure or well, is it both? When we say sleeping on the floor, just please know that that's a plastic bed that they're on on the floor. It's not a bunk that's attached to the wall. It's a plastic bed that's a two and a half inches off the floor. Uh, so, so when we say sleeping on the floor, they're on an elevated platform of a plastic. We call them boats. Uh, uh, there's multiple. It's just a... a Portable bed is what it equates to, uh, but there is a certain unencumbered space per inmate that is preferred and in some accreditation process required. Um, if you're trying to meet the American Corrections Association standard, it, it delineates what an unencumbered space per cell per person is. Uh, that's all lined out. And I guess, and you know, to be clear, I guess when I was talking about the bigger facility. I didn't necessarily mean that, you know, covered square feet or square feet under HVAC. I was only talking quantity of, of inmates we would house. I, I just, I, I don't, I'd rather not build a facility that's intended to house more people than the one that we have now. Uh, if the structure we have now that's supposed to house a certain amount, if part of the reason that it's such a problem is it's not large enough to house them, then, then I guess the structure has to be bigger. I just, I'm not intending to build more uh, more spots, more more uh, more occupancy. I guess I should say. I'm not intending to build more occupancy, just better occupancy. That's a reasonable living condition for, again, those people that we have custody of for less than a year, and that's and that's what it comes down to. I mean, they're not long sentences. That's not. I mean, that's not what we're tasked with. You know, we, we have them on a you know hopefully a temporary basis and hopefully not a repeat basis. So it needs to be a reasonable. I mean, it needs to be a reasonable living condition, and, and it's not currently. So no, and and, and, and see, in, in no way would I be dis would, would disagree with you. Um, it was just yeah, you know, I want to have total clarification as we make a decision. I mean, we have a debacle on the new jail. Period. Uh, by bad information by people who advise us who are. Who, who that should be their job. It's not my job. I'm a policymaker, and so, and ultimately, I'm responsible because you know that we're the ones that they'll 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 write about because we made the decision. So I want you know clear clarification to your statement, and that's why I'm glad the chief came. You know, is it? I mean, obviously, the building is in horrible condition. That's 
publicly, Commissioner Bagash put it on this blog. I mean, so is the current capacity what we need? And if it's not, then let's look at the data to make sure it is. Uh, DLR, which was our group, and Commissioner Underhill said it best, we were given a presentation and we have a design and a drawing of phase two already. I mean, that was presented by Jack Brown. Uh, I got uh, October 19, 2016. I mean, there is a, I mean, I'm looking at it now. We have a, a whole design and a layout of, of that building and what the desired population was. I mean, I don't know if that still holds true, Steve, data and trends change every day. But I mean, we, we, we have to make, you know, True then, yeah, that, no, that's true. Maybe it was true, but we have to make, we have to rely on the experts and make intelligent decisions from there. And so that was to to my point that if the only thing that we're doing, and Stephen, then I'll hush, Mr. Chairman, if the only thing that we're doing is continuing to take public dollars to build facilities. We are going about incarceration the wrong way because you can look at other communities and there are other models. There's not one solution. They're, 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 it's a multi-pronged solution to reducing the amount of inmates who are incarcerated in a jail. And we have to look at all of those. It's easy uh, to keep your eye uh, on one target and that's the building with, and taking your eyes off the target, which is really the people. And I think we have to keep the target on the people, the programmatic part of it, and those things that reduce it. So that's all I was saying, uh, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Commissioner Bender. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lim, as you talk about the holistic approach, uh, Chief, um, can I, I've heard anecdotally maybe that if we build a standalone uh, medical facility or wing, um, is there some cost benefit or um, financial benefit in how we can classify where they are? No, because not necessarily, sir. Right now, our infirmary is housed with every custody grade that we have because it's the infirmary. So they may be a max custody inmate, two cells down, a minimum custody inmate uh, in the infirmary. Uh, and then so, but having a standalone facility is, is going to change that operation. But I, I, my question more is about, uh, and it may have been when I was, I was giving the tour down in Orange, that um, there may be a different funding structure uh, with having them in a, in a separate facility that's not within the jail, and that's how we might be able to gain, uh, how we may be able to get paid uh, for them being in there as opposed to being in the jail. I'll reach out to them and see if they've cracked, okay. cracked something that I'm not aware um, of. And, and so that's what I'm saying. If, if we're looking at everything, I mean, if there's a, a, a way that we can uh, put them in a um, substance or um, a mental health, you know, if they're staying there, and we get to charge a, a Medicare, Medicaid rate or something like that because they're in, in that facility versus in jail. Um, let's look at that as, as well. Okay, well done. Commissioner Bender, I would say that that's a, that's a great point. I think as we move through this process, we can't stay isolated here. We need to travel. We need to look at newer facilities that have recently been constructed. We need to assess them, ask them their strengths and their weaknesses through the construction of the facility itself, the layout, how the, the facility functions. We need to do, in my opinion, quite a bit of due diligence of that kind before we just accept a concept or, or design. We need to actually beat the bushes and go out and see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, and I think at least with the the new facility that we have now, I think we are at least giving that a little bit of a test run in terms of does the cafeteria, you know, meet all the needs of, of the foods for both, you know, I mean, all those things that what we were told was all the systems, the main, you know, systems of the facility could be put in this, this one. How is that working out? And do we need to tweak what, what Lumen has sitting there? Or can we just build the housing units and, and we're good to go? Um, Wes, I don't believe, I think we've interrupted you halfway through your presentation. Do you, do you, I mean, we under, I think we understand. <laughs> I well, think I think we, we know where we are. We, we were right. to the long-term solution, which we know is, is to build a, a wing or a facility of some sort. Uh, I've heard uh, some direction of, of not, well, uh, I, you know, increasing bed space and such. But I guess what we're looking for is we would like to begin the process of moving forward, uh, RFPs, consultants, designs, 
uh, information gathering, we would like to be able to move forward with, with that initiative. Well, and I, and I think you've I think you've heard that we need to do it, and I think you've heard uh, consensus on that. I, the one point where I don't I don't know that we have consensus is exactly what we're going to spend on that old jail. I, I mean, I'm hearing my counterparts say that you know whatever we got to do in the near term, but the one question that hasn't been answered yet is if we do that. Because I know I'm going to be the lone outlier. I don't want to spend any more money on that jail. Jeff, you keep saying that. I, I, that's untrue. I mean, I, I, you don't want to spend money I, there. Not until I see an analysis. Okay. I mean, um, I mean I, yeah. If, yeah, if, if we, we only send, if, if if you can satisfy everybody in those two buildings, we only got 50 inmates, and I can send them to Walton. I'll send them to Walton. If I can negotiate with the chief judge to mm -hmm. get those people out of the jail, that's what I'll do. I mean, I'm 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 what supporting I'm, you. On what it, I'm yeah. most well, thank you. I appreciate that. What I'm most concerned about is, are we going to keep it status quo with three inmates per cell? If if that's what I'm hearing, I'm, there's no way I could support that. Chief, is that what we're going to plan to do with those two pods? Keep them three per cell? No, sir. We should be able to draw them down once we have the Fairfield building into play. It, it, it's a proverbial shell game. It, it, it's dominoes have to fall before I can bring that. But those population. are the maximum security guys. So, so how, how is that going to help you? I'm going to disseminate them amongst the right now. I have some medium custody over in that building, too. Those are coming out. Okay. Uh, the plan is for them to come out and be put in the new facility and, and, and some relatively cautioned, if you will, medium security and into the Fairfield building. And the other question I never really heard an answer to, this new design with the open podium, for lack of a better word, is that is that safe? Yes, sir. Is it, I know I heard it was all about the classifications, but if. if well, that's exactly what it is. If, if we overloaded those those uh, units with maximum custody inmates, no, then, then the answer is no. Sure. If you put the custody grade that it was designed for, mm -hmm. and we operate in the capacity that it's designed for, bed space, inmate population, then we're, we're okay. But if we start changing that mm -hmm. to put maximum custody into units that weren't designed for maximum custody, it's problematic. Well, how much maximum, maximum capacity, uh, maximum custody capacity do you have in the new jail? In the new jail, 128 beds. 128. Yes, sir. Dumb question, but can you double it up? I mean, if, we're, if we've tripled no, it up, sir. okay, but nah, I love it when we get no right away. We've tripled it up in an old jail. It's very deficient. You're saying we can't double that. If we had to, I'm not saying it'd be ideal, but we couldn't double that up and, and get rid of the old jail. I'm just trying to get, a, get away from that old jail. I understand that, sir, but my job is to tell you from my perspective. And, I, 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 and I respect that. And, and that's what I'm telling you. If we do that, we have the same problems we have today in a very short period of time. Yeah, but what you're hearing is we're going to have a long-term solution, yes, which is going to include more building more capacity. And that's why we, we developed the sustainment of the old facility to get us to that point. What's the minimum amount of money we'd have to spend in that old jail just to keep it in a caretaker uh, status until we put it uh, on the ground? Commissioner, I don't have a number for that at, at the Give moment. Give me a ballpark. We got $9 million in the bank for this effort. He's pulling it out the air, though, when he so says that. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's pulling it out the air. Yeah, I mean, they, they ought to be able to come back. I mean, it's a, a Well, there's two. No, no, there's two science. pods. But guys, there's two pods they're talking about. And, and I and I walk through them. I mean, they've got to have some ballpark idea. The toilets are ripped off the wall. They're in really bad shape. But I mean, is there some preliminary numbers if they're going to keep about 3.5, 3.5 million in that old jail? Yes, sir. I can't support that, guys. I'm sorry. Too much money. 3.5 million. But, I'm not but is that a real assessment, Wes? I mean, well, what, that, I that, mean that we, is, we hadn't had an engineer, we hadn't had an architect. That, I mean, we hadn't counted how many toilets, how many square feet. I mean, come on. I mean, that's construction. It's called an exact science. It's well, not, that's what called, I was, that it's was, not what, social work. That's what I was fixing to say. We, we don't have our consultant on board just yet. I mean, that, I don't that, care that, if that, staff that, does it in-house, but I mean, he knows how many linear feet of drywall, how many toilets, how many pipes. Tell me what a real price. Don't come tell me $3.5 million, and then they write it in the headlines, and then we don't do it. Well, I that's mean, my That's my not fault. a real number, in Lumen, my opinion. Uh, Lumen, that, I that, that, that Yeah, is, well, you, you press, that's not a real number. Yeah, I mean, how that's much, fine. Lumen, how much would it cost you to build a house? Oh, $500,000, Jeff. The thing that concerns yeah. me is when I, when I pressed him for the number, I got a number of 3.5, which tells me it's probably going to be more. I walked <laughs> through the jail. I'm telling you. It's, it's not in good shape. We did so. a $7 million change order almost because mm -hmm. it was supposed to reduce personnel. Absolutely. On the advice of people yep. who work for us. I'm not just saying the consultant that worked for us and now we're getting beat up. For you're it. right, but we're, that's a, you're trying to conflate something that's totally different. No, no, this. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to conflate that. I'm, I agree with I'm, what I'm you're not going to take a, a, a half cup r remark that it's going to be $3.5 million and it ends up being $5.5 well, million. Well, okay. Um, now, if someone says to me that they're exact, that it's 3.5, well, that's more realistic. Okay, that, well, let me, that's that, what, is, that, that is an estimate. 
let's is, drill it down. That Wes, is an educated estimate. Wes, and I, I'm sorry to the nth degree. I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but let's drill down a little bit on that. What I saw in, in those pods, would that include replacing the glass? I mean, what, how do you get to 3.5 million? Specifically, what are we doing? Rob, would you come to the podium, please? Yeah, let's, let's talk about exactly what we're going to be doing. Are we repairing stuff? Are we doing brand new installation? Some, some of the systems in the, um, in the old jail towers need to be completely replaced. There's no repairing them. Okay. Give that's me some examples. The plumbing system. Yeah, and the that's why we have all the leaks. The electrical system. So that 3.5 would include replumbing the entire facility? How do you, how do you replumb? We have a, we've identified a small section, okay. two floors, in the five-story tower, the north tower. Mm -hmm. um, we can rehab those two floors, and we can accommodate the maximum security population that we currently have. But in order to do that, do you have to replumb the entire facility? We're not going to replumb the entire facility. We're going to abandon the rest of the facility, the other three buildings. Okay. And you can do that? Yes. But that's the, that's the lion's share of the cost, I'm that's assuming. That's the lion's share of the cost. The critical systems that I looked at were plumbing, electrical, parts of the security systems, the PA systems, mm -hmm. um, parts of the fire system, um, <clears throat> then the surface systems inside that need to be refinished, um, the, the uh, plumbing fixtures, the toilets were mentioned, things like that, the showers, complete replacement. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that's just a hard pill to swallow. Commissioner Underhill, then I'll get Commissioner Barry. Commissioner Underhill. If it was your money, would you do that? In this situation, um, from what I know about corrections, and I've learned a lot in the past couple of weeks, I think this is a viable solution, at least for the next seven years. Interesting answer. So for the next seven years, we've got five stories sitting abandoned. No, we would have two stories in there um, completely rehabbed. Uh, the other two stories are for control. Two floors. Two floors, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. are for control. The bottom floor would not be touched. The other tower, the seven-story tower and the two three-story towers would just be abandoned in place. We would disconnect the utilities or shut them off. So they stop leaking, try to get them the deterioration under control, and just use the, that one building for maximum security. Okay. Um, gentlemen, I will remind you, I don't have to remind you, the, the ones that were here, um, what really kind of had us raked over the coals with the people, and rightfully so, was the uh, the ongoing costs of, uh, of incarcerating uh, elsewhere, right? So, and uh, I mean, you, know, so, you know, mobilization and demobilization costs are, are, are huge. Um, and a big part of what you pay uh, for a construction project is just what it takes to get the developer to come out, or the builder to come out <laughs> and set up, and then tear down and go home. The opportunity and the choice that we're eventually going to have to make here in the not-too-distant future is whether the people of Escambia pay for that one time or two times. There is no, there is no realistic way that we, that we avoid this much longer. Mm -hmm. um, and while certainly won't be in my season of service, um, you know, don't know how much longer the rest of you guys are planning on being up here. Um, but this is seven years is like tomorrow. <laughs> so it really, it's an enormous amount of money to spend on something that then we will have to come back and redo again tomorrow in, in you know, political terms. So I do hope that uh, as we continue to look through this, we recognize that we all know what an end state of right looks like. The only question is how quickly do we have the courage and the money to get there? Um, and if our bonding ability is at, its, at, at practical historic lows right now, um, then that absolutely has to be factored in. If inflation continues at the rate that it is, then you recognize that, that borrowing money on the front end of inflation is a good thing, is the right time to borrow money, if there is a right time to borrow money. Um, this will never be cheaper for a future board up here. And that future board will sit here and they'll say, man, those guys should have done the whole thing when they had the chance. So I do hope that uh, as we circle around this discussion a few times that we land on something that makes a lot of sense, not just today, but 10 years from now. Thank you. Commissioner Barry, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it, that it would probably be, you know, decent advice. We're together again in two weeks and, and you know, I know that, you know, it was relatively, you know, recently you were over there and it's, it's become, you know, very public issue, but it, you know, it wasn't long before that, that uh, the administrator made a trip over there and uh, communicated to me what was there. That was, I don't know, December or sure it was uh, December, January or something. I mean, it was either a few weeks, maybe a month or so before your visit. So, you know, and um, as I stated, you know, 
uh, a little while ago. I mean, this is not a problem that, well, first of all, I, I know the severity of the problem and the, and the specifics of what was actually going on is not something any of us, any of us knew. Certainly, you know, we don't, we're not anywhere uh, on a day-to-day -day basis trying to, you know, trying to run the county in that fashion. But, um, you know, it wasn't something until that visit for, uh, for Wes that he was aware of either. So I know. It's, it's not something that, uh, it, it, you know, it's not, you can see by the circumstances, it's not something that happened overnight. It is something that has gone on for a long time. It's just not something that we were aware of. And, and up until also very recently, it's not something that Wes was aware of. I think that, you know, we've had to, uh, you know, dust off some old presentations, dust off some old assessments, those kind of things. And they're just, you know, they're not, uh, you know, you can't really take a 2012 or a 2014 assessment now and, and feel good about what that recommendation is or those numbers, certainly. So I think, uh, you know, in just the, you know, just the couple weeks that we've had, I think there's already been quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of progress made about laying some, you know, laying some ideas out for us. I think no matter what we do, the, the other side of these short-term solutions, which is utilizing Fairfield, which is, you know, the, uh, you know, getting the L Street building for our purpose, these, these are all good. These are all, That's in exactly. my opinion, these are all really good ideas. Yep. I think the only thing that, that there is some discussion about is how to, how to handle the old facility in the, you know, there's not a long-term future there. So if we just take that long-term future off the table, so we, well, we know, we know it's not a long-term future. We know we're not there in 10 years. So that's off the table. We probably do have to make some decisions about even breaking up that short-term future. And maybe it's broken up into terms as small as, you know, for, uh, you know, for the next, you know, for the next year, this is what we need to do, and this is what will enable us to be able to do this for a year. Then after that period of time, we should have this up and running, we should have this up and running, and then if we have a gap, maybe we do have to fill that gap with, uh, you know, with a, a more creative solution for 24 months while we're getting something else on board back here. So, you know, even though nothing related to the old jail is, is real long-term, I think we may even have to break it up into you know, one year term, two year term, three year term, as far as we do this for a year, we, you know, then we know after 24 months, we'll be able to come back and do this. But I think in a couple of weeks we can get, a, you know, we can certainly have a lot better, uh, a lot better idea than, uh, you know, somewhat just kind of throwing something against a wall right now, which is where we are. We, we still may not have final numbers, but two weeks I think will give us a lot of clarity for some of those decisions. And, and you know, I think we have given Wes I think a lot of direction about the long term. Look, I think we do go ahead and you know make the plans. You know make the plans to bond the money. I think that's a, I think that's something that, that all of us agree to. I think that everybody's on board with uh, you know with the other aspects of it. So we're we're going to be I think going full bore down that path, and then we try to see what those options are related to the old facility. No, I appreciate that, Commissioner May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner. Very, I certainly agree, and um, and Doug, I, I, I'm going to have to agree with you. I mean, conceptually, in my mind, uh, being someone who does restoration work and preserving buildings, if I can, if I can rehab or retrofit two floors, I can retrofit three, four, five floors. I mean, you know, and so if the bones in the structure uh, is sustainable to retrofit two floors well it's you know I, I can retrofit in my mind unless some expert tells me different i can retrofit three or four floors if i if i put in the plumbing the electrical i mean if we get all the technology stuff there i can i can renovate it i'm not support i'm not supporting that i'm not advocating for that i'm jeff i'm with you of demolishing but i'm kind of with commissioner on the other that if i'm gonna renovate those two floors i'm probably going to renovate all the other floors unless that is the only alternative and so and for me to make an intelligent discussion it would have you would have to show me that we're only spending 3.5 and it's maxed out and you know how much would i spend if i only send 75 inmates to walton county i mean i, I don't know because i'm going to tear that down so it goes uh commissioner barry when I think about this and, and the things that we do and getting consultants, I'm all for consultants. 
But, you know, we voted. You voted. Doug voted. I mean, we voted. I don't think the other two guys were here. I mean, we spent almost a part of the $3.9 million, $75,000 of taxpayer dollars were spent on things, on reviewing alternatives to incarceration for implementing new programs. We reviewed the entire master plan of phase one and phase two. You know, did a real cost estimate. I mean, they did facility tours. I mean, they did research, data, and gathering that was presented to us in good faith, and I voted for it. And so I'm, I'm okay with bringing in a consultant, but certainly I'm not okay with throwing away $4 million worth of research and data that we, that, that we utilize. And so that should be implemented before we can make an intelligent decision because, you know, we held our nose and made this vote, and now it's come back to bite us. And we paid, you know, just for, the, just for what we've talked about today, we spent $75,000. I mean, for the overall jail, we didn't. When we talked about the construction of this jail, it was never conceived as constructing a jail. It was the largest public works project that this county had ever had. It was about redeveloping Pace and Fairfield. It was about putting in a community center. It was about phasing in phase one with the jail, knowing that we're going to have to phase phase two in because we knew that jail was in bad condition. And we uh, hired experts to represent us to collect that data and to come up with, quite frankly, the concept uh, generation of what that's going to be. Well, I know, you know, we, we acted in good faith and, you know, make the decisions based on the information that, that, we, that, that we got. We, I mean, we, yeah. we, we, hope the, we, we hope the data was all compiled and put together in good faith. Right, absolutely. And so if we have to have someone to review that in-house staff. I mean, we have a new facilities director. I mean, obviously we have a new administrator. They were not here in 2016. But, I mean, there was a, a, a review of alternatives to incarceration master plan for a Scamia County. You know, and so all of those Building phase one was just one tool or one part of the protocol that needs to be reviewed, in my opinion, to see were we able to implement it, why weren't we able to implement it, is it still relevant today? Because we spent not on the jail construction, but on a consultant side, $4 million to get to the point that we thought that we would be doing something that's efficient. But today, we're, doing, we're sitting here talking about something that has not been effective. So in my opinion, Wes, that has to be inclusive. Sure. For me, for me to make that vote, Steve, because when you're making a $200 million vote, $300 million vote, as Jeff, I mean, Doug said he's getting ready to leave. I certainly will not be here for, for the satisfaction of, of, of that bond. Robert's young enough. You're probably young enough. Uh, but I'm not interested in, <laughs> not in, in, not in spirit. I, I, I won't be here. Uh, but I'm not going to create debt uh, uh, without being responsible and without, you know, every time we get ready to do something, we just go have some consultants to do another study. And you know it's not worth the paper that it's written on. So that, so I'm there, Steve. I think in concept, Jeff, you're looking for votes and how we move forward. Absolutely, I, I can support uh, the two other facilities and an analysis from my facilities guy. I'm not interested in spending a lot of money to tell me you know what are our alternatives. You know if if it really is 3.5 and from West and Chief to tell me exactly, you know what would it cost on other alternatives. Give me a couple options and then let me make a decision no, that's rather than me to sit here without the information and now I have to go back and research you know for days and spend the last week going back for five years looking at jail information that consumed my life when people get paid to do it I mean yeah. that's what I would expect no, from them to that, bring that back that's that's perfect that's Wes I think I think that's a button on it I think thank I, you and I'm, I'm just gonna make a couple statements and you guys uh, you know throw something at me if I'm wrong I think we're all in agreement that bonding is is what we need to do especially now with the with the, the rates gonna be going up um, to look at quickly building that expansion. I think we're all kind of in shock a little bit about the amount of money it would take to, to just keep that current old jail um, in a, at a state where it's humane. Um, I'd like to know, I'd like a better idea of what that would cost, and I think my counterparts would too. It's, it's, it's a number I'm, I'm really not willing to, to go, but I will look at it, and the alternatives as well. Uh, Walton County or Santa Rosa, if that's, I hate to say that, but, um, uh, if you could bring that in a couple of weeks, that'd be great. And I also want to commend you for, for I mean, you're thrust in this situation and uh, for putting together the, the plan. I appreciate you bringing that. I know it's not um, popular what's happening here, but we got to get it fixed mm -hmm. for, the, for, the, for our employees that work there and for the people that we have, uh, that we're charged with taking care of while they're there. So, um, and Jeff, I know we're about to close, but I do have one more question for, yeah, but please, for Allison please. or for the chief. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, you know, Allison, there was a DOJ report, and we were able to, I mean, because of the explosion, kind of put it on hold. How have we met those objectives that were in the DOJ report? Are, are we, have, have we met those milestones? 
I mean, the findings that DOJ gave us, I mean, have we been able to satisfy those? From my perspective, obviously I wasn't here and we weren't put under consent, so, but based off my readings of what was presented and the steps that we've taken, uh, I, I feel comfortable saying that, that we have met the objective of the, the information that was put in DOJ. So on these two DOJ reports, you think we met them? I only know of one. Uh, How many we have? Thousand? One or two reports? Two findings? The, the, the one that was the subject of the proposed consent agreement was the May 2013 report. Yeah, that's right. probably the one but but I'm, and I'm good, no, Chief. I, I just want to make—I don't want anybody to say, "Hey, you know, no. the, the DOJ report fell on deaf ears." I mean, just as long as you're addressing, you yes, feel like yes, we're addressing yes, all those concerns. Yes, I mean, that's good enough for me. If, if, if he says that, you are. All right, uh, West, you. Uh, uh, so just, uh, Commissioner, I appreciate the con conversation this morning. I believe we have clear direction and what we need to provide and what and direction gonna, we need to move. And you're going to bring it back in a couple weeks, a refined? Uh, absolutely. Okay. And meanwhile, you're going to still move forward with those other two facilities because there's consensus. Absolutely. On yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for the good? No. We're adjourned.